Hi, I'm Ben Metelopol, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through our server access getting started guide. This guide is going to be a great introduction to teleport server access, and we're going to be primarily following the bastion pattern. This should be quite familiar for a lot of you. The idea is you have one central bastion, and then you have all of your hosts behind it. For this sort of demo tutorial, I'm going to do things you wouldn't necessarily do in production, but I'm trying to break it down into just sort of showing how Teleport works, how you add nodes, and um, ways in which you'd want to secure it in the future by hardening your bastion. The prerequisites is you do need a Teleport cluster. I have another video that talks about getting started with Teleport 10. I'm going to add a link above. You also have the option to use Teleport Cloud. Another thing that you need is you need tcuddle and TSH on your local machine. We have more instructions on configuring in our installations page. And then we'll need one host um, which will serve as our node. It can be a Debian or an Ubuntu instance. I'm actually going to launch a EC2 instance, so call this Worker 10 Teleport. And I'm just picking the smallest instance here, a micro. I am going to set up a key pair. It's going to put it in one of my publicly accessible VPNs, sign a public IP address. We're going to create a new security group. We're only going to set up SSH to sort of bootstrap this instance. Smallest disk. And then one other addition in Teleport 10 is we have the ability to pull in metadata automatically using the metadata tags API. So I'm going to figure metadata accessible to be enabled and allow tags in metadata also to be enabled. So let me launch that instance. Okay, so once it has been set up, you know, we've talked about over open port 22, we're going to install Teleport on the host. We have a range of options. I quite like to use our package repos, our dev or RPM, because it also configures systemd for you. But we have a tarball, and we also have ARM instances and our legacy repo too. So let's go check on our instance. OK, so it's check is running, but it looks like it uh, should be able to connect to it. So let's open my terminal and just create like a new. OK, so we're on our host. So let's start with installing. So we're going to add the repo. And we're going to install Teleport. As you productionize this, you would likely add this to your um, AMI. You won't have to worry about the installation steps. OK, so we have Teleport 10 installed. We can now go to the next step. So step two is we need to add the node to our cluster. To do this, we're going to start by creating a join token. And this join token we use using tcuddle, which is our administrative tool. And we're going to write this out to a file. The file sort of helps direct sharing the tokens, even when they're dynamically generated. And in this case, we are going to create this on my local machine. So I'm going to log in using TSH. I'm going to make it my second factor app. And then if I come here, we're going to use this command. OK, it doesn't like you're actually running a sudo. So run it without sudo. We have this token file here. And actually, I think this has a dot into it. So actually, this is our token without the dot. Um, I've probably put in a pull request to fix this, but just if you're following along, just to be aware. And then the next stage is we need to add this to our uh, cluster. So actually, one of the first things is we need to first get this token into our host. So I'm going to just copy it, come to my host, and 
create a token dot file. And then next up, we're going to start teleport with our cluster. I've used have my scratch pad here. You'll notice I'm just using this direct path. This is just a case of sudo. We have we've installed teleport on our EC2 user, but not the sudo user. So I just use the direct path for it. We're going to start with the node service. You'll notice in other protocols, it could be a DB or an application service. Um, but since we're just worrying about SSH, we're just using going to use node. I have my file and token dot file, my auth server, which is the proxy address. And then I've also added a debug just to give me some sort of helpful output as I've initially configured this. So it looks like everything was pretty successful. It looks like it joined. And one interesting thing is once you've used this join token, it's valid for an hour, but after that hour, it just has a connection. So the token is just initially for that initial connection. And so let's go see it in the UI. Um, log in, let me get my authenticator app. Teleport 10. So this is bucket teleport 10. If I come in here and do EC2 user, I do cat EC2 token.file, you can see I'm on the same hosts that we configured. So, you know, we already have this user created. We've only given uh, this role editor and access role using the principle of least privilege. We've configured this earlier. Let's go to SSH into the server. We've just shown you on the web UI. You can also do the same thing in the uh, local host. So if I do TSH LS, I'm a worker 10 node. Uh, EC2 user at so I'm on that host now and you can see notice this is quite a long URL I can also use labels to access this host and so I've used uh, labels now and um, which is like a very helpful powerful feature And um, we've used TSH LS and we've done the TSH SSH. We also have TSH options and the SSH options here if you want to use OpenSSH. One of the other powerful features of Teleport is we have a full audit log. You can see when sessions start, when they end, when certificates get issued. And we also have session recordings available. So while I didn't do a huge amount, um, you can see what happened and what's cool about teleport session recordings is it's a full um, output of what happened during that session that you can copy and paste. Okay, so step four, four. So here we have some information about using TSH um, and the unified resource catalog. You can also use tcuddle. Uh, this can be helpful if you're, um, an administrator on the cluster, so you can see which versions connected, what are some of the labels, um, other UUIDs. And if you add labels, um, this is also a powerful feature that you can just use the label, let's say ev, um, environment equals example. You can run that across all of the uh, nodes that have env.example. And you can customize labels as part of the teleport.yaml configuration. This can be sort of very useful to just using labels instead of just IP addresses, since IP addresses can be sort of ephemeral and can be changed. And um, another very powerful feature is that you can also just run commands across all labels. So let's say you had um, 10 worker nodes, you'd call them like n worker, you do ls and you just list all of them, run and execute them across all of the commands, which is very helpful. And then last up, you know, now we can access teleport using the host. We can turn off SSH to this particular host. So in the case of AWS, you'd come to my security. 
I would come and edit my group and I would just delete my SSH. And so there's no inbound rules now for this host because, but I can still access the host using teleport because teleport has a connection and now instead of using open SSH, we're just using teleport to connect to it using the bastion pattern. Um, and then this is kind of a conclusion. So we've sort of gone through how to set up and add a SSH node to a cluster, and then how to connect TSH to manage and uh, introspect the cluster. So now we can sort of shut down and sort of go to next steps. We have a lot of other useful guides here um, for more advanced things. So using Teleport with OpenSSH, using our BPPF enhanced session recording, Host user creation is another new addition in Teleport 10. This configures Teleport to create the transient host users. Um, we have restricted sessions. So lots of useful information here, which really upgrades previous um, server bastions. If you have any questions or comments, you can join us in our community Slack. It's available here and free and available. Um, thanks for watching, and I hope this was helpful.